Megan Thee Stallion has drawn criticism from Amber Rose for her performance at a recent Kamala Harris event. In an interview with Adam Ross, she talked about the change as well as the vice president's ongoing campaign. I think that she is pandering to black people. To start, Rose acknowledged that she liked Megan and called her a good person. However, she added, I think that she thinks that that's what black people want to see in order to vote for her. She continued, I think that people in general just want to know the policies. All that, you know, the extra stuff, it's cool, you know a concert and stuff like that. But what about the policies? How are you gonna make America great again? No pun intended. Megan Thee Stallion's previous best friend is Kelsey Nicole. She contributed significantly to the Tory Lanes and Megan Thee Stallion shooting case overall. For example, there was much dispute around her evidence in court. She seemed to imply that Tory Lanez was the shooter during her deposition. She completely changed her behavior, though, when she was on the stand. Despite this, Tory Lanez was found guilty and is currently incarcerated for 10 years. As rumors and reports about her began to circulate, Kelsey Nicole took to Twitter to reaffirm that she has been found not guilty on several times. It's easy to get lost in the media, but let's remember my name was cleared by both parties involved. Stay tuned, she wrote. That's it, then. Kelsey Nicole isn't really concerned about all of the circulating reports. There is not much more that can be done at this time. We'll have to wait and see how Megan and maybe even Tory react to this. Former Tory Lanez driver Joaquin Smith made a statement earlier this week detailing his observations from the night of Megan the Stallion's shooting. Smith claims he witnessed Meg's ex-best friend Kelsey Harris take a gun away from Lanez, despite his insistence that he didn't see Meg get shot. Why would she make it up? First of all, I think it's above her. I don't think she made it up. In a recent episode of the Joe Budden podcast, the statement provoked a discussion about the case and inspired Budden to offer an intriguing perspective. It's above her. She's a, she's a mere pawn in this. Though he doesn't believe Meg was responsible, Budden disclosed that he believes Lanes was set up. This play is greater than her. She didn't make nothing up. I ain't gonna say who I think made it up, but it wasn't her. He continued, believing that Lanes's automobile had the gun that was used to shoot Meg. Actually, and is out there know who it is. I ain't saying it on this broadcast, but I know exactly who it is. I know how that gun got there. I know who gun it was. He continued by bringing up Harris, a crucial witness in the case, and a private conversation they had previously had about it. I thought it was weird that the last time we talked about this ST, Kelsey Harris jumped in my DMs talking about, hey, don't talk about this no more. Why? You got immunity. It's odd. Why wouldn't you want somebody to talk about one of the biggest cases in however many years? That was odd to me, he added. I absolutely fucking hate it, I'm sorry. The new album by Childish Gambino did not sit well with Joe Budden. He truly declared that he hated Bandostone and the New World in his podcast critique. He went on to elaborate on his criticism of Gambino's output, and what he wanted to see in a Gambino release. I know I'm gaining a reputation as a hater. Well, fast gaining. Said Button. If you spoke as much as I have to speak for a living, eventually you'd have to start telling the truth about some things. He added that he was a fan of four songs, one of which was Steps Beach. Button admitted that the music he prefers from Gambino is what he does in the style of Earn, a standout from 2013's Because the Internet. For me, there wasn't enough of this particular style on here. Said Button, referring to Steps Beach. Button mocked no excuses, calling it a bisexual song. He got real alternative, he said while listening to the track. He still praised the track, despite making fun of it. Let him get in his bisexual bag. Nah, this song is like you're taking all takers. Whoever trying to holla at the club, you down. It's fire, though. Button did not address the alleged taunts directed against him in his album review. Gambino criticizes a rapper who has a podcast on the song Survive, which some fans took to be a reference to Joe Button. On his most recent album, Bandostone and the New World, Childish Gambino raps. However, not as much as one might assume. The artist uses electronic embellishments and oral experimentation to break up the bars. I put your boy in the seat. You got your business. An infrequent exception to this is Yashinoya. Childish Gambino delivers forceful lyrics on the song, which features a trunk-rattling instrumental by producer Triangle Park. In his lyrics, he takes aim at an unidentified target. But supporters have been eager to point out hints that suggest the target is right in front of them. The rapper is allegedly the most recent to criticize Drizzy Drake. The first lyric is the strongest indication yet that Childish Gambino is aiming his criticism at Drake. I wash my hands when I eat. I never hand her the key. The use of the moniker The Boy evokes the nickname that Drake has used over the last decade. Genius even posits Gambino's wording as a means of schooling the sixth god, hence putting him in a seat. The next few lines have also been theorized to be about Drake. I don't know no one BD, he raps, but they dependent on me. BD is baby daddy, which technically applies to the Toronto rapper. Drake also scored a hit single in 2023 with Rich Baby Daddy. The remainder of the song is full of slights and remarks that are blatantly directed at Drake. A house may be found on the app, as Childish Gambino puts it. 
bringing to mind the famous visuals from Kendrick Lamar's Not Like Us Dis. Additionally, the rapper implies that the person he is targeting is surrounded by unreliable individuals. They plotting hard when you slat, he spits. They got a gun in your back. This who you trust when you sleeping at night. There's even an academic bar. Academic not silent like knife, childish Gambino raps towards the back end of the verse. Naturally, the allusion is to a loud gun, but it may also be used to DJ Academix, and the fact that he acts as Drizzy's spokesperson. Well, actually, no, sneak this in time. Like, it's never over. It's really never over. The story of 2024 hip hop will be Drake versus Kendrick Lamar. There is nothing that will surpass it in significance or focus. Everyone had a great time maybe with the exception of Drake. Nevertheless, the fight might not be finished. I can't wait to hear the first sneak diss. DJ Academics has persisted in raising the likelihood that the Six God has more unreleased remarks concerning his adversary. By Drake's standards, at least, he has been silent. However, DJ Academics stated during a recent webcast that more K.Dot sneak disses will be released soon. Matter of fact, I don't even tell y'all what I heard, but, 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 but I can't wait to hear the first sneak this Drake got that's dissing Kendrick, how he positions it. Axe's loyalty to Drake is unquestionable. Nevertheless, it seems that the hip-hop star has insider knowledge of the OVO camp. His forecasts and refutation of rumors have generally come true. That's gonna be interesting. How does he position it? Pause, pause, extra pause. Naturally, he's not perfect, but he has enough reputation to be credible when it comes to new Drake work. He dubbed the upcoming phase of Drake vs. Kendrick Lamar's fight sneak dissing time and expressed delight about it.